Okay. Right. Well, thank you <laughs> for those who have stayed behind to, uh, to listen to this presentation today on um, where are we on the journey uh, to sell machines as a service. And uh, I would uh, like to tell you a few things, a little bit about myself and uh, our company. Okay. So uh, we are Max Solutions, and what we do in the Internet of Things is we enable customers to connect stuff together, do that securely, sending that data from A to B securely, and when it arrives at its destination, we help them to analyze that data. So we're an enabling company. We specialize in the Internet of Things and data communications, and we help our customers get assets connected together. We started this journey some 10 years ago um, asking a simple question. Are you still sending people out to support your customer installations? And if you were, there's a better and cheaper way to do that by connecting those machines and assets to the internet and doing remote diagnostics on those assets versus spending the time and effort getting people across the world to try and support those assets wherever they may be. And this is part of the reason there's been an explosion in the Internet of Things. Um, a very common number that's passed around the industry is 50 billion internet connections on the planet, which is seven for every person on the planet. And why, what's driving that? Smart living, smart healthcare, smart energy, smart factories, which is what Max Solution spends most of its time in, but also smart buildings and smart cities. Everything is getting connected to the internet, and there's a reason for that. And it's part of the change that is happening in society and the way that we buy things and the way that we buy industrial assets. I've just had a new kitchen. Half of the kitchen now is on the internet. My washing machine, my um, dishwasher, my ovens, they're all internet connected. Why is that? And uh, more about that later, but there's a good reason for it. It's all part of the same journey. In 2004, this was forecasted by the Fraunhofer Institute in Germany that there's a change taking place. This is before Industry 4.0 had been invented as a term, but it realized that we are going from a society that makes things and sells those things to people, uh, which is called a product orientation, to a society that will make things and then lease those things to people. And then make things and not only lease those things to people, but also charge the people on a paper result basis. So you're going from making an asset to charging for the use of that asset on a paper result, a paper use. And that's really the journey that's taking place in, in society because we can now pay for our cars on a paper uh, subscription basis. We can pay for our mobile phones on a subscription basis. And we're heading towards paying for machines on a subscription or a paper result basis. So what does that look like in terms of a growth landscape? Well, we've talked about the 50 billion internet connections, 60 million machines in factories that are more than 50 years old. So if we're going to connect all those machines up, we need to do a lot of work in providing legacy connectivity to the installed base. 1.9 trillion in cost savings and increased productivity globally is available, and that could have an impact of between 10 and 15 trillion dollars on global GDP over the next 20 years. So there's huge potential in getting those machines connected and starting to look at different ways to utilize and to buy assets. So at Max Solutions, what we do is we help people 
get those machines connected up. Because you can't collect data, you can't understand the use case unless you've got all of those machines connected. So we at Mac Solutions, we sell the world's largest machine connectivity platform, the HMS E1, Industrial Router, and the talk to m uh, cloud connectivity platform. And that enables us to connect all those machines together. And how many machines are connected? On this platform, we have around 215,000 connected machines on the platform, makes it the world's largest machine connectivity platform with over 18 million connections. And this is a heat map, and it's got an orange dot for the location of every single machine. Tells you a lot about where the industrialized world is, but it also tells you a lot that these machines are all over the planet, and this is only going to continue to grow. We're adding about 75,000 new machines onto this platform annually. So it's really grown exponentially over the last five years. So we're getting all the machines connected. We're doing that securely and reliably. So how do we get data from these machines? And where are we sending that data to? So at Max Solutions, not only do we do the platform, to allow you to get those machines on the internet, but we also sell what's called the middleware software that allows that data to flow to the destination that you choose in a way that you want it to flow. So one case is you go and take the data from the machine to your headquarters. So you could be the machine OEM, you've made the machine, you've shipped it to Brazil, how do you get data back? You want that data to come back to you in your headquarters and you want to run dashboards that you would maybe resell back to your customer base. So you may just want to run dashboards. You don't care if there's a loss of data. As long as you get 99% of the data over the life of the machine, you may be quite happy. It's a very easy way to do that is use MQTT protocol. Um, if you buy our Kepware um, OPC server software, you get a broker thrown in. You need a broker to use MQTT. It's a data warehouse. You get data back. The important thing to notice, though, if you do have a network outage, you will get data loss. You may want to send that data instead of back to your headquarters, push it into the cloud. Siemens, Mindsphere, IBM Bluemix, G Predicts, Microsoft. Lots of different cloud services out there where you can push that data and you're not storing it at your headquarters, you're trusting a third-party cloud provi provider to store that data. Again, a network loss, you could lose some of that data and uh, I'll tell you why that's important later. Finally, um, at Mac Solutions, we've also created a piece of software called Fetch, which works with our talk to m Cloud. And that will guarantee no loss of data on the machine over the lifetime of that machine. We use store forwarding technology on the E1 and our own um, fetch data collector software to make sure that we do not lose any data on the performance of that machine through its lifetime. So here we have a network outage with no data loss. As soon as data is reestablished, we collect that data and we've got um, the life history of that machine. Once you've got that data, you then can track the usage of the machine. You can look at machine variables, alarm history, the use case, and production variables. You can learn about the context of the machine, whether it be the motor, the actuators, the uh, hydraulics or pneumatics of that machine. So you can compute and combine the results to basically inform, notify, and alarm um, various issues that you have on that machine throughout the life cycle of that machine. And there's a number of analytic platforms that you can buy that will do exactly this for you um, to, to enable you to make better decisions on the use of your industrial machines. So where's that all heading? Now this is a good example of a customer of ours who makes train washing machines. It's a nice, simple example that we can all understand. So he's got his E1s connected. He understands exactly how many carriages he's washing, what detergent he's using, how much water, how much electricity. These machines cost between three and 400,000 pounds. 
He sells them to Network Rail. Network Rail wash the machines for the network operators, and that's the current business case. But imagine you've got five years of history of this machine running. You know exactly how much electricity, how much detergent, how much water. You've got that five-year history, and, and you know exactly how many carriages it's washed. So instead of selling that machine as a 400,000 pound asset, it's very easy to understand that you can stay, then go to that customer and say, well, I'm going to charge you 10 pound per carriage to wash your carriages. And maybe over five years, and this is the obviously the premise, is that over five years you will make more money. And when that machine is not washing carriages, who's losing out? The machine OEM. So you've completely changed the bargain of the responsibility of making that asset perform. And that's where we're headed to machines as a service versus machines as an asset or machines that you can lease. This is machines where you're getting paid per the output of that machine. And if it's not producing output, you're not getting paid. Coming back to my dishwasher, why is Gaganau tracking the use of my dishwasher every day? Because at one point in time in the future, it wants to sell me that dishwasher on a paper wash contract. And when it's not washing my dishes, they'll be out very quickly to get it up and running again because they only get paid when it's washing my dishes. This OEM will only get paid when it's cleaning train carriages. And that's the journey that we're taking to machines as a service. And of course, it throws up some challenges. Who owns the data? You know everything about your customer. You know, if you know how many strokes the pneumatic cylinder is making, you want to know that because you know, want to know when to do predictive maintenance. So you want to understand the machine data so that you can make sure that machine is continuously working. But every time that piston makes a stroke, it's a widget produced. So you also understand all about your customer's production rates. So you're using the same data in different ways. So there has to be some kind of a data contract with NDA agreements so that you're allowed to use that data for your own particular use case and keep that data secure. But there's a third opportunity, which is called anonymized data. You may want to publish data on those machines for some reason to compare with other industry standards. Are your machines running as productive as other people's similar machines? What are you doing different? So there's other possibilities with data contracts going forward. So who gets value out of this? Well, of course, the machine maker. He has to change his sales proposition. He has to ease up the opportunity to create service level agreements, charge per the output of that machine, uptime agreements, use case optimization, yield agreements with his customer. He's got a lot of new opportunities to monetize that machine, which he didn't have in the past. Also, he's getting data to make better machines all at the same time. So a lot of value for the machine maker. But at the same time, there's a lot of value for the asset owner. He may be af being forced into entering into Kanban agreements and supply chain agreements with his end customer. Now he's got a partner who's making that machine who's in the boat with him. So those contracts are tied all the way through the supply chain. So a lot of opportunity for the machine operator owner to make money but also take cost out of his system because he's not buying the asset now, he's paying per output. Doesn't need to borrow as much money as he did in the past. It's easier on his balance sheet. So that's the journey that we're on. And at Max Solutions, we're helping people take that journey. And there's a couple of common characteristics about the digital cockpits that are being generated to allow people to take that journey. Of course, these machines are all over the world, so you've got an interactive map view. You're creating custom dashboards which can operate on the, the buy side and the sell side of the equation. You're doing personalized KPI reporting for your customers and different use case scenarios. You're doing the machine analytics, you're doing predictive maintenance, and you're informing, alarming, and notifying. 
most of the systems you'll see around this exhibition will do some of these things for you. Mac Solutions, with, we've got our machine view solution, which will also perform these functions for you as well. So this is the tool sets that you need. You need a partner to help you connect your machines and um, would be very happy to talk to you about your journey as a machine maker and getting your machines connected so that you can start your own personal journey. So come and see us on F12 and we'd be very happy to talk to you. Thank you very much.